Now we do. We're ready for that. Okay. Okay. Sorry, I was supposed to signal you, wasn't I? Yes. Oh. Okay, now I'll call the meeting to order and note that we have four of the five ACHD commissioners here. Commissioner Hansen was called away unexpectedly, so I, you would need to open your meeting and do a roll call, or what do you do? Well, that's okay. here. <laughs> well, well, we'll do the same thing, I guess. Um, the City of Star has three council members here, Councilman Hershey, Councilman Keyes, and Councilman Chadwick, um, Councilman Nielsen at Family Obligations, and uh, Mayor Bell is not here tonight. Okay. Well, welcome. We're glad you're here. Um, we're going to start with a presentation by ACHD, Challenges on the Horizon. Good evening, gents. Uh, I am uh, Paul Dangle, the Chief of Staff. Welcome. The uh, Director Bruce Wong sends his regrets. He is finishing up his vacation. He will be back first thing in the morning, but it's the Hawaii hangover, so uh, you know, he'll be with you next time around. We have several members of the staff here, and I'd like to take this opportunity to have them introduce themselves, so if you have questions for specific people. Gary, let's start with you. Wallace, Deputy Director of Plans and Projects. I'll be talking to you in just a minute. <laughs> Tim Nicholson, Deputy Director of the Maintenance Division. Steve Price, General Counsel, and I will not be talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Director wanted me to give you just a short uh, presentation on, on what the challenges facing ACHD are. Next slide. So, we find ourselves at a bit of a crossroads like everybody else. Uh, obviously, you know, the, the talk of uh, the town is the explosive growth here in the valley. You know, it's, it's been in all the papers, and so we're experiencing it just like everybody else. Uh, our capacity is, is getting to be stretched pretty thin, uh, and we end up with a balancing act. You know, you, there's only so much revenue, and you know, maintain your assets, new infrastructure needs. So it's a pretty delicate balance that uh, we, we have to lead going, going down, you know, in the, into the future. So next slide. Obviously, Crossroads, I love that slide. Population growth. Let's talk population. This is from the Communities in Motion 2040 Department of Labor. Currently, we're at 470,000 plus in the Treasure Valley. And by the year 2025, we're looking at uh, in excess of 550,000. So, I mean, well above the projected growth curve. Uh, 20%? Cheaper. I'm sorry? 20%? Uh, yeah, I think. It, oh no, no, I'm sorry. That's total. Yeah, exactly. So you're going to have uh, in excess of 80,000 people more by 2025 than they than they've been planning on. Next slide. Development activity. So 2016 to 2017, you can look at. Uh, I just want to point out the actual 2019 population estimate is 400. 18,000 higher. Yeah. So, 18, higher. Lots of cars. So, in terms of growth that reflected in the numbers that we're experiencing, development activity from 16 to 17, as you can see, plan submittals were up 23%, subdivision permits were up, pre cons were up, zone permits were up. Next slide 17 to 18. Look, again, 13% increase in development apps, 15% increase. All the numbers are increasing every single year. Next slide. Year to date so far, we're seeing the same thing. So lots of growth here in the valley. Next slide. New residential units. Uh, the six year total right there, over 23,000 single family residences uh, since 2013. And again, you know, population growth just, just going off the charts. Um, so it's not clear. That's, is that Ada County or the entire Ada County? Ada County. Ada County. Ada County. Ada County. Holy cow. The, I'm sorry. The, the, the permits there, the 23,000 to 21, that's actually built out? Okay. Correct. And, and I have another slide later on that shows you what's on the books and hasn't been built. Yeah. That's what I was yeah. to get to. Oh, oh, it's not quiet. <laughs> For the rest of the story. So uh, I'm going to go through, uh, we, we have seven zones. I'm going to go through each zone so you can see the growth in each particular zone. Next slide. So zone one, Boise Garden City, uh, that 
LM is lane miles, so relatively low growth, but you know, there's already been a lot uh, of growth in, in this area. So next, zone two meridian. Again, they've, they've experienced uh, an awful lot of growth. We're only projecting another 50 lane miles here. Cuna South Meridian, 110 lane miles, a lot of growth right there. Now, part of the issue in this area, you have a lot of old two-lane roads, kind of like some of the things you have in Star. We're getting these huge subdivisions built on these two-lane roads, so development is taking care of widening some of those, but uh, there's, because of, of the way some of the growth is, there's still gonna be intersections that are nice and built out, two-lane road to the next intersection that's nice and built out, so it, it is a constant challenge, a mix of, of rural and new roads in this area. Next slide. East Boise, per, pretty stable, uh, not, not a lot of growth there, but uh, we're still projecting about 20 lane miles there. Uh, the big thing there is, you know, you, and you'll see here this in a minute, we have a lot of aging infrastructure uh, there, so uh, that, that's going to be a challenge. Next, uh, Foothills, moderate growth, about 43 lane miles. This is the oldest part of the system. Uh, again, some, some issues uh, that we're gonna have to start replacing uh, some of the older assets. Next. Okay, the area that's near and dear to your heart. Huge growth in, the, in, in Star Eagle North Meridian, 132 lane miles. One of the fastest growing areas in Ada County. Huge subdivisions. Uh, and again, that mixture of rural roads, uh, you know, with, with uh, some of the new stuff. Gonna be a tough challenge. Next slide. Summary, uh, just in zone six alone, uh, right now already platted almost 14,000 lots. So adding another 370 lane miles. Next slide. Let's show you the age of the, of the system. So the, the legend right there, the red is the oldest stuff. Uh, yellow is up till about 1999 and the green is the newer stuff. So you can, pretty much what you'd expect. You know, there's been a lot of growth in zone six. So there's a lot of green up there, Boise, a lot of red. So it, it creates a, a real challenge trying to maintain that older infrastructure. Next, again, the system growth. We anticipate a grand total of somewhere between 370 and 400 lane miles by 2025. It's an awful lot. Typically, you know, when we uh, were planning on growth, it was at one and a half percent, but you can, you can see we're exceeding that right now. We, we've been growing like crazy. Next slide. Um, Development applications are going to continue. The bottom line on this, everything's going to continue. Development apps, building, everything's just, it's just going to continue uh, for this foreseeable future. Next, funding is always going to be a problem. Uh, majority of our money comes from property taxes, highway users fund, impact fee, vehicle registration fee. We have to try to figure out how to stretch that dollar uh, to meet all of the demands and the priorities that are set by the commission. Next slide. We have a CIP, I'm sure you're all familiar with it, but if you add up everything in the CIP, it comes to almost $900 million. Uh, currently right now, uh, with our, our revenue and everything that's in the integrated five-year work plan, we need about an extra $10 million a year you know, just to fund the CIP. So as you can see, it's going to be a continual challenge for us for the foreseeable future. So a quick summary. An awful lot of people coming into Ada County. The system build out is uh, showing through the huge subdivisions. We gotta maintain that, that uh, aging infrastructure. And because we have that approximately $10 million shortfall to build out the CIP, we're running a little bit behind on, on uh, the money trying to keep uh, pace with our needs. Can I take questions? I would just point out that based on the growth that we've seen recently, I think Compass's um, estimate of 80,000 more by 2025 is low. Our, our that's what I've seen from Compass is low. Yeah, we have, we're looking at our own projected numbers and the Compass numbers that they published for us for 2017 and 18 were below. Mm -hmm. And lower actual recorded known numbers. How, how, just how bad was it? Just out of curiosity. No, it was so, 17, 1800. Really? By uh, 20, 2018, was it? Yeah, our, our actuals of 2018 exceeded their, their 2020 plan forecast. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, think the, I think the entire county is experiencing that, that same kind of thing. So 
Yeah, you're not alone. Okay. Any other questions, statements? I'd love to get a copy of, the, of this sure, deck and, and all the other decks sure. that, that we see. No problem, right. so. Thank you. Love to. Okay. All right, that's it. Uh, next, we have the 2020 to 2025 integrated five year work plan update. Again, that's a presentation by ACHD. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, I'm Dave Wallace, Deputy Director of Plans and Projects. Uh, I'm a poor substitute for the person that would normally give a briefing about our draft integrated five-year work plan, but I will muddle my way through it, and I look forward to your questions about this. Maybe I'll answer a question or two that you had. I do have a handout, which I'll pass if, I, if you wouldn't mind. There you are, sir. Just for these guys. I'll get you one you this is a list of things that are in star in the plan. Right. So right now we're in the middle of our public comment period. It's been open for nearly a month. Public agency comments for the draft integrated five year work kind of close a week from yesterday. So next Monday. Uh, we're planning on a budget adoption uh, two days after that, so a week from tomorrow. We'll get uh, public agency comments back for the work plan and are planning on an adoption of the work plan on the 25th of September. Worth noting that we do budget constrain here. So the first year, the first, really the first two years, the integrated five-year work plan are the budget. So we have to be able to pay for what we plan to build. So, uh, as an example of what goes on in the public comment period, I may need to have a hand with a link in just a second. So we have a brand new, relatively brand new, award-winning map, which really is the plan. If I could ask you to click on system. the link. I like it. You've used this. I've used it. I, I was actually in here on that PAC committee when they brought this up and showed us this, and, and it's a really user-friendly deal. For, for the moment, I'll just use the laser. Whoa. Laser pointer on this. <laughs> what you no, do? This, well, I, didn't I pressed the laser pointer. We have two of us working the system here. Oh, all right, I'll stop doing that. <laughs> right, this apparently works more than the laser pointer. Yeah. So, uh, if you were to touch one of these lines, for example, uh, over in the star area, go to the purple line, come up and to the left. There you are. You touch that, it gives you an idea of something that we're going to do on floating feather. It gives you, you can actually click for additional information. Uh, at the bottom of that block, for those of you that have used it are, are familiar with this, we'll tell you uh, how much we plan to spend on that project and uh, the, as you see, the, the years that are involved in, uh, in pursuing that project. Go ahead and click on that, would you? So this is a snapshot out of what is the printed integrated five-year work plan. If you scroll down to the bottom, there we go, it gives you an idea what the estimated costs and the uh, elements of the schedule, uh, including construction. Can we step out of that? We could. And back to the briefing. Thank you. So as I said, those of you that have used this have found this very useful. Between now and next Monday, while this is still open, I encourage you to go to this if you have comments to make on any of the things that you see in there. Uh, and that, of course, will be recorded. So far, we've had some 800 inputs on the work plan to date, so the draft work plan we have on the street, and about 32 of those have come straight off the map. Just 32 come off this map as well? That's all we've had off the map as such, but there have been a lot of people that are eager to comment on what we do, aren't they? So, uh, here is a list, of, this is a, a, a small uh, sample of what we have uh, in STAR. We don't have an awful lot of projects there. We have two, and they're not in the same year, on Floating Feather, very top right, technically not really there in Star, is the uh, the west end of Beacon Light Road, um, which will be part of a maintenance program. Uh, and we have a number of bridges which are included, and you can see where the years are, are for those projects. <clears throat> so, one of the things that we did last year, and I know that you're familiar with this because, of course, uh, Brooke Green, who's in charge of this, briefed the City Council, uh, the uh, Star Head Bike uh, plan for your area. This is a source of things that uh, could be very useful to all of you. Here's the area. You 
may recall the type of outreach that was done, including uh, a couple of pop-up meetings, and there are the dates for the presentations that she gave. And this was adopted in October last year. Now, I actually have a copy of that, and this is uh, available to anyone who would like. <coughs> so that's posted on our, our city's website as well. You bet. So oh, that bad boy. You guys all have this, right? You see, so that's a. Yeah. Okay. So that is an example of uh, one of the things that we have done in concert uh, with the citizens of the Star area. And a recommendation might be on this is that you could order from that plan if you'd like some of this stuff done in an order that we haven't seen. I know there was a question about what we have done in STAR in the last five years. So what we have completed in STAR, 2017 a Crack Seal and Chip Seal programs, 18 cul-de-sacs and adopted that plan I just put in front of you. And those that are programmed are listed there. So what's the cul-de-sac? Cul-de-sac is just what it sounds like. This is something we don't chip seal cul-de-sacs, so uh, okay. we use a, a different uh, sealant on them. Okay. So. Uh, there were uh, some done in 2018 there. Two more in a developing area, uh, and we typically await development on those, and here's a suggestion. We would recommend that you could perhaps talk to the mayor or yourself, sir, uh, and get in touch with our commission about what you guys would like done. So uh, we have heard requests from your staff for the last five years, but only from the staff. So, so <laughs> that's part of what I wanted to talk about tonight, about the process of Right, because that's how we were directed to do it was okay. through our staff, not from us. Yeah, it we comes were from us. Yeah, with the list, and they would give you five things. So my, my question to you is: Is it really just five things, or can we provide you with an entire list of things that we want done? Go for it. Okay, priority. Go yeah, for it. Yeah, priority. Okay, order. because because we were yes. we were led astray. <laughs> yeah, we were doing this, and, right. and that's why I asked this question: On what have we really done in the last five years in Star? Because sure. I haven't seen any. The, the last major project I think that was really done was the was the sidewalk down Main Street. Yep. Um, was the last major project. And I think started. that was technically in fourteen. Right. That was quite a while ago. Yeah, it was. So, so, so I don't honestly I don't I, in in my my thinking the chip sale and the crack sale and all that I don't count those as really projects. Those are maintenance. I, I get it. It's a maintenance function, but things to help our city grow and and, and prosper and stuff like that. Maintenance projects. Yeah. Stuff. You bet. Yeah, you so, bet. So, and again, write to us. This is what, and if you've been led astray, then I'd like to apologize in arrears. Well, it's not you. Not you. We're not saying it's you. It, it's it's from within our own our own staff because this is the way we were directed. To okay. Do it. All right. So, so I don't know what, how what they heard. I can't speak to that. Were you limited? Did they say just five? Just five. Just five. Yeah. Oh, they, they make us uh, narrow down to about five items that yeah. we've discussed yeah. it over a course of a couple of days. Yeah. The biggest city here prioritizes 68 projects, yeah. and they have more, but those are the ones they prioritize. Okay. So please, feel free, and I, I know that our commission will be delighted to hear from you. Yep. Absolutely. What other questions do you have for me? I, we'll, we'll get, probably get more of what I want to talk about later when we start talking about it, and then you'll still be here. <coughs> yes, sir. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. All right. All right. Thanks. Thanks. When you go through and prioritize them, it can be anything from uh, uh, filling in gaps on sidewalks to things well, the school district would like. To, if you'd like to see the school district have, sure. That's and I, I have it listed out here a little bit. We're going to talk about with some of those pedestrian issues that we have out in store because based on this, we have about 25 some miles of, of sidewalk gaps in Star. That's a lot of gaps. And we got a, we got a middle school out in. A distance away, right, with a future high school going there and no safe routes for these kids to get there. Right. Right. I mean, so we got we got things that we need to fix and do and, and I'm glad to hear that we can put more items on this and really get this thing going with you. But we need to talk about how we can get some instant love to the city of Star right here on, on some of these projects. You know? One of the things that might that you guys already have the program might be helpful is if you're getting project submissions from uh, localities that are in a, what you think is a, a really good format. I'd love to do what we call R&D, rip up and duplicate. So if you had something yeah, that what you really like, send that to us. And we'll, we'll adopt that format. And, and right, yeah, how, how to do it. Together. You can do that. Yeah. You can do that. Well, you know, if there's something that you like, you know, let's start with that. So. We're just happy when we get requests from the, the cities. I mean, we've had some cities who, who don't give us anything, and so we have to kind of oh. go in the back and 
yeah. back a few years to see what exactly they had asked for in the, in the past. But you know, if you ever have an issue with or a question, just call one of the commissioners up or email us because. Well, I and, and I, I go away with what Trevor said. I think that that you know the direction that we've gotten from uh, uh, you know from from city staff and 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 the communication from leadership and stars has not been adequate. I mean, we need to figure out how to address that and, and, and do a better job. So, yeah. You all have my contact too, so we've met. So just any commissioner can help you, but um, you know, just reach out to us because if we don't know, then we can't. Yeah. That's why, uh, just to echo what uh, Councilman Keith said, if we had something from you or somebody says this is how we like it, then we're certain that we don't miss a critical step in your approval, the yes. This is always a no until you go yes. And so if we can make sure we get in a format that doesn't miss anything and have to cause more communication, I'd be all for that. that question really right there with the two projects that, that you showed up there I don't know what you've done in the last five years for star um, I don't know when it's I guess we can, you want to go into some of this stuff now with, with these questions I mean that's the basis of that question is okay now now that we know that we we've had chipsy on and stuff done in the last two years in star there's there's things that you have on this integrated five-year work plan that is actually scheduled out there for, I mean, we're talking five years or not even on a future day, that are critical for the safety of our, our pedestrians in our, in our city, right? And some of and those things, I believe, that are on that were identified in this plan that, that I did with Brooke and, and the uh, GUB and stuff on there, right? And that's what's on this, on our five-year integrated work plan, basically. So for instance, if you guys look at the, you have this little sheet right here, I believe it's the uh, Pollard, Pollard Lane is one of them, is a, is a big one. Um, I'm sorry, not Pollard. Plumber. Paul, Pollard is a big one, but Plumber, for instance, that bridge that's there on Plumber, right? <coughs> the sidewalks direct people right out into the bridge to go on the street, which is a which is a high travel road, to cross that bridge to get back on the sidewalk to go because of a canal right there, right? We have we have people that live in a couple of the subdivisions that are in wheelchairs or walkers that try to go up to the commercial center that's in the front, walking, right? And they get directed out on this road and they dig their day in, right? And that is one of the ones that is put out on a future date uh, on your plan. How do we, and, and that price, you know, the, the budget that, that, that I showed that was on there is about $524,000, right? So how do we get things like that moved up a little bit for the city of Stars so we can get this taken care of? Even, even if we don't replace the bridge right now, to put a temporary, pedestrian crossing over that canal until such time that you can do that, right? I mean, it was a $20,000 part to put a temporary bridge that allow these people to travel safely across that. You see what I'm saying? I mean, how, how, do, we, how do we work as a city here with you guys to make sure that we get some of that love? Because some of the, you know, I know last year, we, you know, I'm kind of jumping around here, but last year, you know, we had this push with ACHD to try to increase some of the fees, right? Um, for registration fees yeah. to help increase some revenue. But when people out in our town don't see projects being done, they're not very supportive of anything, right? But if you can throw up a sign and you can do some of these projects to help people get around safely, and pretty easy ones, it gets in their face, right? So, okay, wait, wait a minute, they are doing projects here, so my money is going towards something, right? I mean, I, I'm a number cruncher. So I look at like property taxes, you know, we spend 661,000 approximately, it comes to you from our city in property taxes, about 768,000 impact fees. So 1.4 million a year. Well, some of that money should easily go into some of these projects because the total of those projects is 3.8 million. We haven't really had anything done in five years, right? How do we how do we how do we push that up so we can get some of this stuff done for our for our citizens out here in Star? Well, I, I think we need to know what your priorities are. So send us the whole list, prioritize it, and then when there are special circumstances like what you just described. Mm -hmm. Let us know that. Okay. Because, because every one of these. No, way of knowing. Uh, no, I know. And, and part of our thing is 
we would like to invite you out there, bring an ACHD commuter van, and let's go for a drive. Let me show you my town. We'd love to put. Let me put show you what is what things. is going on there, how this development is happening, and what these gaps and stuff are, and where you can visually see the concerns we had. Our former mayor's daughter got hit by a car on her bike going to school on Floating Feather because there was no sidewalks last year. Remember you remember hearing about that? Yeah, I do. And and that is actually planned to have a sidewalk put in now, but it's not planned for a few years. How many kids is it going to take to get hit to make sure some of this stuff gets done? Right. Even, even if we do something temporary in front of where we where we know asphalt be development, whatever. Can we do something cheap and temporary with asphalt and, and, and right. just get something? Because right now they're 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 out of traffic and rush hour traffic on these roads is they're, they're two lane farm roads. Yeah. Right. Just like they're, you guys said, two lane farm roads. Service, you know, by or servicing you know hundreds of people in subdivisions going to work in the morning. Right. And we've even asked our police to step up enforcement. And school time frames to try to slow some of this down and they have but they're not always going to be there yeah. right and, and so if we can get these people and kids safe I'd really be interested work. in that field trip so uh, I think the get field trip, scheduled um, yeah I think the field trip would be beneficial to right. see what is really happening in the city of Star it's easy to sit in here and talk right. and this list take this list with us because honestly the stuff that's on the integrated five-year work plan right now those are all except for one of them is a bridge winding you know on floating feather which that can happen later, in my opinion, because we stop sideways. But everything else is more a pedestrian related deal. I mean, we can follow the list, but it would be good and beneficial to go around with you and get the backstory. And yeah. so, if we can get something like that scheduled. Yeah, as, as much as we'd like to ask you for $150 million to widen, you know, Star Road, put a new bridge in for us, we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. But uh, uh, yeah. the, 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 the things I think that we like are things that are already on lists that have been developed. Right. We'd just like to see about reprioritizing them and, and Pulling, especially the ones that are uh, public safety issues, see if we can pull those forward. And, yeah, because uh, you know, I think if we if we put our head down, we could probably um, reorder that and come up with something for you guys before next Monday. We could have it before the trip, or definitely. And also, I like the idea of putting up a sign saying, "Hey, ACHD did right. this." You can't even see it with the city of Star. Uh, I'd love that. It shows joint collaboration. It's just, you know, the, the, the stuff that's on the integrated, and, and granted, you know, we're finding out the fault is not with you guys by any means on this stuff. It's it's the fault of our staff on not, not directing this the right way on getting this stuff to you, right? So this is, I'm, I clearly am not blaming ACHD in any of this. I'm just saying, how do we fix it and get this stuff moved up? Because we truly haven't had stuff done in our town for years, and we really need it, right? Um, but none of this stuff is really Per your schedule that's on the end that proposed schedule is not till 2023 that's three years down the road before you see anything happen right and that's just a schedule too correct there's not it could be any I, I read plans. it on the bottom subject to change well, yeah a, <laughs> a plan is a plan until it's a commitment that's right right <laughs> yeah the plan is solid until about 30 seconds after you try to implement it then it starts to change <laughs> So, so the the seventh, Munger Road is the other one with the three bridges on Munger Road, and that's a big one. But the Brandon is that much better. I mean, you've got Brandon and Munger and, and New Hope up top. This is this is like the opposite of what you were talking about with the intersections, right? The intersections you're building the intersections and the end of these two lane roads, right? But we have these wider roads because of development narrowing down into these little skinny or bridges, which is forcing people out onto those bridges, walking in the traffic as well, the bicyclists. All that kind of it's, stuff. It's so, just bottlenecking. It's not fixing a process. Right. It's just moving so, the so problem. To, to Trevor's point earlier, have you guys ever done temporary pedestrian bridges over canals and whatnot to to, to do some uh, mitigation until until such time as a you know, a, a, a full blown? We don't do not to yeah. my knowledge. As yeah. a general rule, we don't do anything temporary over the canals. Yeah. Talk to the national. Well, let's think outside the box. Movable permits. So if we can fix the canals company. Sure. Yeah. There are channels. It's all about, to me, it's all about talking to the other deal together. Yeah. Yeah. You can send us, all we need is an official letter saying, okay, here are our 10 projects, one through 10. We also send representatives to your city council members. Right. I don't know who our rep is now. They grab the person by the throat and say, hey, here's, you know. I can't say his name, I heard. Is it Edmondson? Edmondson. 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 Good conduit that, that give us back information.
information as to your priorities as well. But between now and, and Monday, just get us a list of your top 10 priorities. And, and would he be willing to go on our agenda quarterly for a report or something like that? Oh, and I said he can do that. Or does he not have a choice when he's doing it? Sure. The expendables out of there? <laughs> no. He's available. He's available. <laughs> no, but when he comes, anytime you have a question, you can I ask, ask him. him. I ask him questions. Yeah. I'm just saying, it, it gets yeah. in a more report format. It gets in front of uh, the public and us, and it just gives us that transparency, sure. too. Yeah, yeah we, we, we want to work with ACHD because you're a vital partner with us on our roads out there. Absolutely. Right? You know, and, and we want to make sure that, and we hear it all the time stop the growth until you can build the roads and we know that the roads won't be built ahead of time that's not just it's not the way it's done right we know the development's going to take care of a lot of that but there's a lot of it that won't get taken care of that we need to try to fix and and, and, and fill that and we can't stop growth no, 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 it's kind of, right. yeah. yeah this is a big step forward so that's good yeah so if we can i would like to schedule us if we can uh, on a field trip if you guys are willing you, you, they say the commuter van is yours, right? Yeah. Because we don't have any vans with stars. So well, I figured you guys have plenty. I think you could probably only yeah. take two at a time. Two up. Yeah, yeah at a time. so we don't have a quorum. Just put close to the public well, meeting. Can we go? Yeah, we can go. Yeah. You can do it. We can just don't take two vans. Are big enough. Yeah. Yeah. You, you can take two vans. Yeah. We can split it up. We can notice it. We can notice it as well. Yeah. And those that can show up. Yeah. Yeah. I just I just think that's important to see our. We're. We, we are so far, not so far, but we're in the far reaches of Ada County, right? It's almost like we are. And I'm just right down the road, and I'm happy to come anytime. Right. So you just, yeah, yeah, yeah. So if we could do something like this, yeah. so you guys can truly I see. I think that would be really beneficial. What we're dealing with out there and the challenges that we're dealing with. Could it be an AM trip or PM trip? Whatever we schedule. Where, where, where I mean, I, I know for me, yeah. PM's easier, but would the first half of September work for? Send it to me, Mr. Chadwick. There, and I and I'll, and I'll get back with you. So, so Trevor, uh, Councilman Chadwick is our, our council liaison to the transportation agencies, and uh, so you know, I think if you know if you want to communicate with the city of Stars Council, you know, I'll always include him. Okay. And you said it's better for you in the uh, yes, but uh, if I can rearrange my schedule, I can. It's just uh, okay. city so council what, does not pay the bills. What time of day is best? Any time in the afternoon, okay. I can usually pull away. <laughs> So do you think, I'm gonna ask this question, any opportunity on moving some of these up before you draft, approve this final one here? Get, get so your list done, prioritize, get, list get, get, get that information like Commissioner Arnold yeah. said. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yes. Get your list okay. done. All right, I just, I, I, I just wanna make sure that we're yeah. gonna be pushing. That's so. key. Okay. <laughs> one, one of the things I will caution, but depending, depending upon the project, it's your list number one. I mean, there could be, Scoping design. I mean, there could be some factors involved. I mean, sure. It's going to take us about two years to, to get it scoped, get it planned, get it designed, and, and get going. So, I mean, you know this what? is not like some of this stuff's going to happen the day after tomorrow. I just want to make sure that you know you understand. So there's a timeline associated with some of these. You could take the money away from Peter. I don't care. <laughs> bring it up. <laughs> I, 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 I have a question. <laughs> I'll write that down. When it comes to projects in the list and all that goes on, and I know STAR is just one entity, yeah. uh, what, uh, is there any criteria or uh, information that makes a project more critical versus uh, how we say it versus uh, if we could say it a better way, like, hey, this needs to happen? Yeah, how do you prioritize it? How do, you, how do, we, how do we push it that way? So there, there is a rack and stack. I don't have the material to show how to do this uh, with the types of projects throughout the county. Remember, this is county money, not city money. And, and there are some entities that forget that, not you guys. Um, so the, the truth of the matter is that we count on your priority and the rationale behind this. You don't have to write a long treatise on kind of why that bridge is more important than others. Um, I, I understand. Um, Know, a community that has folks that are in wheelchairs that, that need uh, the mobility that's important too. So 
But anyway, that, that's why we count on your prioritization of this stuff, plain and simple. And so the you, justification would be, uh, use I, I have people on wheelchairs, <coughs> you know, yep. I mean, anything that you can use to justify elevating that project. That would be significant. That, that helps. That, well, the other thing too is, is that it's, we like to spread the money around as well, you know, so if STAR needs a project and it's not $5 million or $2 million, you know, chances are it will rise to. That was my next question. Level. Is there a certain dollar level that automatically pushes it or is it not driven by that? Obviously, well, I know $1 nice. taken from anywhere, it's, we're not for-profit entities in any way, shape, or form, so any $1 given someplace has to come from somewhere else. I understand that. But I think, no, but you know, understanding the budget constraints, which you saw on the yeah, slides, right you know, $5 million projects for a pedestrian project is probably not going to do as well as like a couple hundred thousand or, or less if it's just a temporary sidewalk. I mean, if you want to pitch it like that, that's fine. You know, an asphalt path waiting for development or working with a, a developer, you know, they put this part in and we put this part in. But right. it's, up, it's up to you guys to come up with so, so when you, you have several categories on your thing, right? You have major bridges, minor bridges, and have this community, or core community projects. So I noticed like the bridge on Plummer Road is part of the core community projects versus the bridges over here on minor bridges. Do, do the, the funding more available in one or over the other? Can we make a suggestion on where to, where, where to come from? Or right. if, I, if I could, perhaps you could over game this. Okay. I think clear text rationale and your need and your prioritization is the best way to do that. Okay. We, we can't over game it, but you understand where our, our need is. I mean, we, have, we we don't feel like we... No. You tell, tell us. You, right, we tell, tell you, but right. but the love, we want to see the love. The yeah. well, else, let's say you have a, a sidewalk that you're, you're dying to do, and your school district goes, yeah, we really need that. You can get the school district to come on board and say, hey, oh, that's, that's what you were saying. Okay. So, yeah. Other effective yeah. some, some of that does appear in that plan, of course. Right. You know, the proposed school example appears in there and the type of connectivity you would need for that so yeah. yeah so what I would do is I would list your prioritization and your rationale for it get the school district involved um, in that support for that that's great too so so uh, to go back to the, the like the safe browse the school deal right yep. um, <clears throat> I've been working with some property owners over there to pull the kids off of the road and through through a pathway between some properties and my understanding is ACHD couldn't help fund any of that because it's not on the roadway. Is there, is there any, is that any truth to that or is there, whatever was that? So, so this is, if we had to pull up a map or whatever, but it's, so like we have Floating Feather and, and Pollard, right? And right between the cemetery going straight into the middle school, we were, I've worked out some agreements with a couple landowners already to give us 12 feet to put a pathway between the properties to pull the kids off of that roadway without the necessity of putting that black top on the other side. I don't want to speak for our lawyer, but, but if memory serves, we are not allowed to do pathways unless I'm connecting two roads, I, I think. So just to do a pathway, I, I don't believe I'm allowed to do that. And we would probably not call it a pathway. Yeah. So, there is but a bicycle roadway. <laughs> 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 What if we were connecting it from a road to a school, but there's not another road at the school? So it tell us what your priority is and let us see what we, we well, have. If there's we a way to get it done, we'll, we'll but it. Just, it has to be a partnership. First, there's a certain part of it that we could do list. You well, know, it'd, be, it'd be like a, in my, in the way I was envisioning this is not an ACHD only pay for it. The city of Star and ACHD partner in paying for it to get done. You, you see what I'm saying? I mean, yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's a partnership deal. But you guys have the the tools, yeah, the, the equipment, and the, the, the equipment. And resources to make that happen. And we have the cash. There are certain things that I just not like to show state law. No, so, right. I don't want anybody to just know. No, I get that. Uh, you may yeah. But again, we don't call them. And I, there are ways to do this. I guess that's the point. You speak on that. Yeah, I'm on that committee. But that might also be a Give us your priorities. And we're set. Got it. So. Priorities. Okay. Well, and something like what you're just talking about, uh, providing a, a safe route to the school, that doesn't necessarily have to go on the five-year work plan. Right. No, I mean, I, I get the 
most right. things done. There's a there's a separate there. fund or something for that, right? Well, well it's just it's a process, it's part of the yeah. different way. Discussing, we haven't come to any concrete solutions with it yet. We're discussing making that kind of project and making that a bit of a priority in our budget this year. Okay, we'll see how it works. Okay, very good. Cool. Let's see. So we talked about street lights. Is you guys have another question on those street lights? So do you guys man, do you mandate certain lightage or, or or anything on the on the main? Just at intersections, we put it in when we build out an intersection, but we, we require street lighting at the intersections. But down the down the actual street, that yeah. doesn't come from you guys on our on, on our projects. We will only if it's needed for the safety of the vehicles. Okay. Right. Introduce street lighting in the city requires it. We talked about those ones Two on ways. Munger. Yeah, so we, we have some lights on Munger Road. You know when they widen the street put the sidewalks in and they actually light up the world over there yeah, i i looked at a contentious things. issue but i didn't know if that was oh, if that was dictated by the an ACHD neighborhood rule it's not a it's a city deal oh, okay but i will tell you my staff has discovered that your requirements uh, require the shields and the lights that they're not always installed yeah well, we're, re we're rewriting our lighting ordinance <laughs> in the town. Start, yeah. yeah, but I, I just wanted to make sure that that we aren't overstepping our bounds with you guys if we were to do that. So that's our requirement. Have you seen those lights? Have I? Yeah. Yeah. They, they just don't look like street lights to me. They, they look like little neighborhood lights. Yes. But they're bright. They they I, I was there to see them. I, I see those things. You can cook space. fish. <laughs> <laughs> It's like a microwave. They're microwaves. Yeah. I, I, they're awfully close together, though. Yeah, there's some sort of them. So, what does ACHD need from us as a city? Lists. Just lists. Lists? I mean, is there is there anything? Start with the list, right? Yeah. Just lists. Yeah. Well, your lists of your projects. Well, no, no, I get that. Yes, I get that. But I mean, is there anything else? I mean, should we be part of any of these meetings? Should we? Should we yeah. set up meetings like this more yes. often, quarterly, something like that, to, to, to facilitate some of the Absolutely. things that, right. and the visions that we have as a city thing. and what you may have as a, as a commission? So we're not so naive, but we right now currently do not have any uh, liaison or communication between the CHD and the City of Star via mayor, mayor's office, or a designated council person. That would be, well, I thought you were so like strictly there, but a committee level. Well, so Brooke, Brooke's awesome. I'm gonna tell you, she's she's yeah. fantastic. She gives me some yes. answers on things yeah. that I need and stuff like that. But that's who I've been working with. Um, and then whenever you send me an email and stuff on, on several things, we, we talk that way. But but since you're our commissioner, you know, on our district, I'll absolutely email you. But I just didn't know if there was a if we need to set up some stuff for us amongst the city. Going forward, and some, account, some and more formal channels, more formal channels to to, to assure you guys well, are getting what you need Edinson. from the city of Star, and we're getting what we need from you. We've got Edinson going to your meetings. Yeah, we, we do, him. but and he'll report back to us. He he will do a report. He if you have a, a concern or an or issue, we have to use him as your uh, not now, not until he knows about them. Yeah, I don't know. And that, that would be good. Kevin Neal suspended the center. Chad would have to do that. Because okay. yeah. it's Friday. It's oh, you're Friday meeting. Yeah. For Star, there's no reason to come. To I'll let you know when we start again. Okay. I just, I just want to make sure that you guys know that the, the communication channels are truly there if you need them. Yeah. yeah. We'll just dust them off. Yeah. We'll dust them off and get them. Well, I mean, that's, that's what we found out. So we'll right. activate them. Okay. All right. Because we definitely want to partner. That, that's how we get things done. We well, have to know what the needs are. It's a if partnership. We don't know, we can't. Right. Everything we do in this valley sure. needs to be partnership because it, the, the way some of the the politics are happening with the divisiveness and and the blaming and the name, that's garbage. That's got to go away, right? We're all in this together, so we need to work together. And that's my that's my whole goal here is making sure that we're working together to get things done that we need to get done. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm not going to be a day beater and, and beat you guys up on every single thing like that. Right. I just, that's garbage. <laughs> 
you know, you, you also have a seat on compass, um, and that means That's every the mayor, two months, right? right? But you could always have a substitute, have one of the council members be a substitute. Okay. And uh, our next meeting is in 26th. Yeah, uh, August. This is the full meeting, one thirty. And you know that's that's mostly what that's dealt dealing with is um, the transportation, okay. and then the the, the twenty forty plan or whatever it's up to now. I can't remember. Yeah. So you know land use type stuff. So I mean, you and you're being engaged. And you could always come. You don't have to even if you're not at the table. You can always come. It's just, okay. mm -hmm. And if you can't make it, you can call in. You can be on the phone. And you're re engaged. So we were happy to hear that at the last meeting. Yeah. So look forward to having you there. So just have um, just someone be there. Just a needed someone there. So okay. if he doesn't come, you guys can. Someone of you guys can. Yeah. We also have another committee called the CICAC that oh, Star has a, a seat at as well. Now they just met. Yeah. Stacy, what, two days ago? Monday. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do we know what the next one is? Uh, we're just reading chapter through all agenda items. Send the invitation to you, yeah. please. Yeah. And we, uh, thank you. We didn't have anybody there at that one either. Yeah, he said Another he city didn't send have letters to there. there either. So you're not the. Do they have one. a representative? No. Yeah. There are a lot of us. Yeah. Yeah. So well Stacy's going to work with Trevor. Okay. There's, yeah. there's, they, but Star doesn't have a rep on that committee. No. Well, there you go. Yeah, yeah. that's the first time we've heard of it. Yeah, yeah. I remember she did say that letters were sent. And we just met with the city. It didn't yeah. either. So. with the city that doesn't make it all the way to us so right. so it would help us if, if there's stuff that you'd like the council to know that you communicated directly to Councilman Chadwick and then he'll fill the rest of the council in. So. Thumbs up on that? I've always been told to say things to the mayor so. No no I told, I told actually, I Director to Long that he should be CC'd right. so. Absolutely. I think council president should be CC'd on almost anything like started we talked about what, what's going on in star and about the planning we've been doing and and uh, the fact that you know stars um, traditionally kind of been hard to get to um, but uh, with the ITD projects that are coming now with, with uh, uh, State Street being widened with uh, Chinit being widened uh, those are I think expected to be done in like the 2024 time frame and then uh, you know all the work with the Central Expressway Highway 16 that's upcoming I don't think that's all scheduled yet but hundred million dollars of it's been scheduled um, the, that uh, um, star is going to get slammed I think with growth even beyond what we see now and yeah. and I think that that a lot of us have been in this valley long enough you know even before we were um, had a momentary lapse of judgment that caused us to run for public office saw <laughs> projects that um, that didn't go off really well and and what I'm wondering is is can we learn from the experience that, that you and your staff have so that as we look at transportation in STAR going out, let's say, for a 20-year horizon, in, in the face of what we think is going to be explo explosive growth, that we can look at projects and update our plans so that we don't do dumb things, uh, so that we spend dollars wisely, we make good decisions, and we don't repeat mistakes that we've seen done elsewhere in the valley. Um, I, I don't know what that looks like, um, but, but I know that uh, um, I, I know it's coming. So I'm just asking, I, I guess, for help from uh, from from your bench, which is which, which is probably your staff, because they've been here for a long time. About uh, what, <laughs> and what, they're constant. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. One's always there. About uh, is, there, is there stuff that is foreseeable in Star <clears throat> that we haven't got to yet that we ought to be thinking about today, so that uh, we don't get in trouble 
15, 20 years down the road. So well, for instance, you know, we were approached about a bypass for Highway uh, 44 years ago, and the leadership at that time said, no, nah, we don't need that, we'll, we'll never need that. Well, we need that. today we need that, and uh, but it's too late. You know, the, that all was overbuilt with subdivisions, so, so that, that option is now off the table. Um, how do we keep from making mistakes like that going forward in the, in the long term? Well, I would say that's that's the land use part of it. Mm -hmm. So, like with the bypass, had you said that's a good idea, you would have done your development leaving that open right. for future future transportation. You had mentioned there might be one on the south that you're looking at. Well, yeah, it's not so much a bypass as a. Uh, it's the. It, in our comprehensive plan and our, and our transportation portion, we talk about doing a, a natural bypass with Highway 16 and Chinden right. and coming back down Blessinger, I think, or Kingsbury, Kingsbury. with a future bridge, right. right? I mean, that was our workaround today for that because there is no land right. to actually truly put that bypass in there, especially with Highway 16 cut down now, mm -hmm. going through there, because there won't be any access off of that. Put in a bridge or move the river. Awesome. It will be awesome, yeah, that'd be good, but another story. But when you do your land use planning, you know, our staff, I believe, participates in that in terms of where the collectors would go, where if there's any arterials to go in, that sort of thing. Yeah, and, and the connectivity and the connections on the local streets as correct. well. Correct, and, and they've been involved in it. That's helpful. I'm, I'm just, I guess I'm looking for, uh, um, there's a way that, that we can look at, the, at, the, at that kind of planning from a different angle. It's like, you know, we did this before and, and, uh, and it didn't go the way we thought. Uh, is there ways that we can anticipate um, things based on the knowledge and the wisdom and not necessarily the recipes and the formulas that, that we would traditionally use for things to, to, uh, uh, to say, let's, let's maybe do something a little differently. Lessons learned. Lessons learned, yeah. Um, and that's really probably more a question for your staff than, than, than for you, but, but I'm, I'm trying to figure out how do we apply wisdom um, and not just rules. Or the which, which, is, which is harder. So, yeah. we, we have some excellent planners. They, they would sit down with whoever you want. And you know, they don't mind giving advice to, to reiterate uh, what the commissioner said. We can't make the land use. <laughs> Our planners are, are pretty sharp, and they can give you some advice uh, you know, to, to help guide you if, if, if you want. Just let us know. We'll be glad to set that up. And, yeah, we're, Thanks, we're, Sammy. Yeah, we're getting ready to do a sub area plan for our area south of the river. So, so I don't know if you know this, so our city limits basically end at the river, um, but Star Sewer and Water is in the planning stages right now to extend uh, utilities south of the river. And once that happens, I think you know pressure to, to develop there will, will increase pretty dramatically. And so we'd like to do some planning down there before that happens. Sure. Is um, that in Meridian's area of impact? No, that's ours. Okay. Yeah. That's Meridian's desire to come over. <laughs> <down there. laughs> that's a long way, but yeah. what we're gonna be. It's not very long. They're right at the corner of 16 and, and Chinon right now, so it's not very far. Right. They want to drop down. They want to come all the way down to the river. Yeah. However, if it's a star sewer and water serviced area, it's very but possible. Still, we're in two counties and we're going for three. Yes, you are. Yeah. 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 Right. It's a, well, most economic <laughs> would go to Katie County and then we wouldn't be involved at all. Right. No. So, that would be that would be great. So, <laughs> good thing you put up on your right. transportation issues. That's a whole nother issue that we're working on. Yeah. yeah. Over there. But, but like Michael said, we're doing several planning stages with this yeah. to try to to try to help yeah. mitigate some of these challenges. Easy job. Yeah. So well, our staff would, would obviously be involved in that. Okay. Not every detail, obviously, but the transportation portion of it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, place I, to start, Michael. So, so growth-wise, you guys seen our comprehensive plan and the numbers that we use to project our growth, right? It's not compasses numbers. Whoever's talking about numbers, yeah. 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 <laughs> right, because our actual growth was about 10%, I think. It, over that's been differential. It's been 10, yeah. Right, and they were at four. And uh, so we're using yeah. seven, seven and a half percent as our projected growth, you know, with hopefully with some of the downturn in there. So we got we caught a lot of, a lot of flag for that. But uh, in our opinion, you got to plan appropriately, right? You can't plan for if it's truly not four percent. Ah, sure. Yeah. Well, I have their population. Oh no, it's just Boise and Ada County. Okay. Well, yeah, according to Compass, we've had.
us through um, our official numbers, I think it was April or May, were 10,990. So we've just come through 11,000. Uh, the signs of the entry to the star, which are the last census say 54, 56, 56. Or something, five something. So Meridian say 56,000. Yeah. So. Michael, sorry. No, I just, uh, you know, I, I want to uh, <clears throat> stay engaged, keep doing the planning, you know, keep, keep getting ready for, for what I think we all understand is coming at us. So. Kent, did you have a comment? Yeah, I just, it just kind of floated in and uh, in my ear, in my mind now, out my mouth. Um, when BRT, uh, you know, we did away with that bus route, how success, I, I haven't asked Maureen this yet. <coughs> You know if we've got more than one uh, commuter ride van filled yet from the start I don't I don't know that answer and you know the reason why we, we did away with our, our oh, yeah. funding for that I don't know if you guys heard that people. yeah so we, we yeah, asked the that, question yeah, our, our question part, is can you can that? you provide us with the data that shows us basically how many bus riders do we have compared to the cost that we're spending out here for that route mm -hmm. right and they can never do that and it's like, okay, then, then and we ask for alternatives. We'll keep yeah. our seat at the table, but we're not going to pay for that extra route for four people. That's a thousand dollars a person a year. I have a car. I have like, yeah, one guy right. didn't know that road he actually moved. <laughs> so, well, I, and I'm sorry that that has to happen. However, I mean, it's, it's irresponsible of me to spend, even though it's only four grand, granted. How are you going to increase my ridership out here? people to get on that bus to make that route more feasible for uh, we had numerous face-to-face -face meetings with these yes. folks uh, and asked if we were we were willing to entertain bringing in more ridership more visibility understanding two years ago <coughs> the complete you know the wash of, of funds but we, we entertained them but they never got back to us with those numbers I, I did attend a meeting at some point you just gotta say Psh. I did attend a meeting of the, the, was it the state state quarter, I don't know what they call that group, but, um, oh, yeah. but they, yeah. they basically end at 16 and I asked that they include STAR and take that planning all the way to Canada Road. Um, uh, nobody jumped up and down and said, yeah, we got to do that, but uh, I think this council would say that we ought to do that. Uh, we've also talked about um, amongst ourselves that uh, because we have in STAR this confluence of 16 and 44 and 20 Six, that, that might be a great place to do, uh, you know, a West County Transit Hub. Uh, again, sometime in the future, not not today. But but if we plan for that today, we could set aside uh, a place in our plan, a, a place to put it. Uh, because if you don't do that, then you know by the time, you say, yeah, that's a great idea. Ten years down the road, all all the obvious places are gone. Uh, so so that's the you know the, another thing I think that uh, um, would be worthy of a discussion, a conversation at least. In terms of long-term, again, 2040 kind of range planning, um, is there a need for a for a West County transit hub, and, and would there be a better place for it than a confluence of three major highways? So, David, you got anything there? Yeah, um, <clears throat> this may sound off the wall because it crossed my mind, and it's not leaving, so I'm just going to say it. First off, you sound like Mr. Goldberg. Yeah. I hope to a day to achieve such greatness. But, uh, you know, I, I don't see a problem here. And, and all the projects we've talked about, I know we can finalize and get, get a good list. But something that it crossed my mind is that I think about, you know, being an elected official and elected officials and, you know, director level staff and, and everyone else is. Uh, it's important to remember what our real role is, and we are what I call support units. Um, I'm going to use an analogy that I've used for firefighters, and it applies there. And I, and I, and I, I, under, I developed this philosophy back in the 80s and 90s when I was an artillery fort observer in the United States Marine Corps. <coughs> the Marine Corps, as you know, is the greatest fighting force in the world. The Army's like eight. <laughs> so, <laughs> I had a feeling. Get a little opposition there. Our Air Force, Air Force guys are. Yeah. 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 We provided your close air support. Army guys. guys. Actually, I have a story where I was in Desert Storm. We made the whole ground just shake. But anyway, I, uh, I realized something that 
in the military, there's your point of impact. In the Marines, in the Army, it's your infantry soldier. Your infantry soldier is the one that wins the battle. However, the entire United States Marine Corps is charged with winning that battle. So you either are an infantry soldier or you support one. And the support of an infantry soldier is artillery, armor, supply, logistics, intelligence, and, and an upper echelon uh, communication. Our point of impact here is our citizens of STAR and, and citizens of, of, the, of Andy County and all of Treasure Valley, really. So I look at everything like this. They're the point of impact, and, and I don't see a problem here, uh, but I'm one level, you're another level, you're another level. And this goes for anyone elected, uh, city council, mayors, future mayors, future city council. But you have to remember, you are a point of impact, you're not point of impact, but you're affecting your point of impact. And the best thing we can do is always remember how does this benefit them uh, uh, in a living stance, in a safety stance, mobility, and things like that. Yes, we all have limited resource. And I can see by your breakdown of budget, you're like us, you get one good recession, you're in a big hurt locker. Um, impact fees would go and property tax would come down. And so uh, everything that we do, and, and I think we do it really well, the council is we try to figure out what is best for our citizens and we're asking our bigger partners to help us there and I don't know how it goes with you in the other cities I, I don't but I can guarantee this as long as I'm on council there won't be any friction that's my soapbox thank you United States Marine Corps <laughs> okay. 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 Talk to you about that because that's getting changed. Oh, how are you? Yeah. And in I've place. already got I've already got that taken care of. That's an ITD issue, so I got that taken care of. Okay. All right. It's going down to eight miles per hour at the whole city. Okay. <laughs> what's not safe about it <laughs> so for, for those of you who yeah. may not understand or those um, who may not understand the route so it's along a busy road um, and there's gravel on both sides by this and then there's a cemetery and then there's also a canal on one side so it's very and then houses, there's a section that's for homes and so there's a number of places where the students any pedestrian or bicycle which we have a number of bicycles Sounds like one you need to talk to your city so about to get list. on the list that they're going to bring this. Yes. It's part of that list. And I think oh, it's, 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 yeah, it's actually there. That it yeah. was on their list, <clears throat> so that's and good to hear. Actually, a couple years ago, we um, were fortunate to have this, it was called Looking Glass Academy. Um, they came out to our city. There was um, numerous people from around Treasure Valley and uh, I think from the call. Um, they came down and looked at Safety of pedestrians, bicyclists, and um, ADA non compliant issues. And there's a number of them just going down the 
That's where the list comes in. Compass asked us for because they have some grant opportunities. Oh, and they're still there. And, and, I, and I think that's where that's, that's coming from. Point. And then we submitted those to them, and I don't think we got the. Well, well then you didn't get funded, but they're going to be doing more. Yeah. And that, in fact, that's, that's going to be on the agenda this August meeting is uh, approving that grant program again. 40000 here, 50000 there, something right. I can't really remember, but so behoove you all to at least know what's going on and then talk to Kathy, I believe her name is, at Compass and ask how the process is for um, submitting those and you know what the guidelines are. So okay. yeah. not not guaranteeing you'll you'll get funded because it's not, no, not I mean, a very it's big pot of money. Right. right. Jennifer, yeah. I get, can I, I'm going to answer this one real the, the star bicycle plan, that plan that we did, yeah. addresses a lot of those issues about the sidewalks and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, and do you know if they're reading the report from ACHD in our, in our packet? Because we get a report in our packet from ACHD that describes and lists everything out in there on the requirements of the developer and uh, the things that, that need to be done, right? Uh, I don't know if they're reading that stuff. You know what I mean? I mean, a lot of that is, I think ACHD does a pretty good job of answering that stuff because I get information, I use their data on there that tells me vehicle trips based on the number of houses and all that kind of stuff that kind of that kind of formulate my own ideas and thoughts, right? This is where, it's similar, you're using the data for this, this version, but we're looking at common sense <coughs> stuff as a council part of that, right? I mean, I, I'm not trying to cut you off or anything, but I think I, I honestly think that that is answered in in our packets and stuff, and with this bicycle plan, as far as those gaps, because we have 25 sidewalk mile gaps, right. and and it lists every single one of those out in this plan right here, and this is part of the list that we got to give the ACHD that they're talking about to get them prioritized on, on getting stuff done. So, oh, also, okay. was there somebody else that had a quick comment or?
comprehensive planning, strategic planning together, I think is going to really, is, is going to be the thing that helps make that plan as solid as start. I encourage you after your debrief, or excuse me, after your write about to do a debrief with a lot of creativity and a lot of solutions, not just in, in Ada County, but in some of the areas. Lori and I have been traveling around and we've seen some pretty amazing areas uh, that allow walkability and allow people to get into the center of towns and also provide some flow of, of traffic. So I would encourage any of the solutions to make sure that we channel traffic into the business areas that constitute the center of star in a walkable, safe fashion. And uh, as, you, as you look at that, that would be a lot of value. People are coming in and landing, nesting, whatever, living in star. of the commission. And I'm going to call our meeting adjourned at 715. Thank you for coming. Yeah, thank, thank you for, you. Thank you for having us.